People have been asking me a lot to test lossless scaling's dual GPU feature, where you can use one GPU just to play the game and another GPU just to play the lossless scaling frame generation algorithm. And let me tell you already that it works very well. And I'm gonna show it to you, of course. Just do it! Lossless scaling is one of the most, if not the most popular option nowadays, if you're going for a frame generation solution outside of the game engine. And this means that FSR, XESS or the LSS frame generation techniques are always preferred when it comes to frame generation because since they are inside the game, they have access to the motion vectors, which means better quality, and they have no issues with the UI. What happens is that the game developers need to implement those features inside their game. And sadly, most games do not feature FSR or XESS or the LSS frame generation, and some of those that do, they have broken implementations like Call of Duty Black Ops 6. So you either mod the game with tools like OptiScaler that you can see on this channel as well, or you use outside of the game features like AMD's AFMF, Nvidia Smooth Motion or THS's lossless scaling here, that even though have more latency and have less accuracy, they'll work without the need of any developer implementation, which is what most people want. And I believe the reason lossless scaling is so popular is the number of features or the number of customization that it presents you. You can frame generate at two times, three times, four times, or even 20 times if you love visual pollution. And the last update also introduced the adaptive frame generation option, where you set a target FPS number and the software will adjust the frame generation ratio automatically to meet that same FPS target. Meaning that if you have FPS drops here and there, the final FPS that you'll have will be exactly the same. Because again, the software will increase the number of generated frames in order to meet that same FPS target, which is actually quite nice. And on top of that, they also introduced the option to select a fixed value for yourself, like for example 1.5 times frame generation, meaning that you could lock your FPS to 100, just an example of course, and have the software generate the remaining 50 FPS, instead of boosting it to at least 200 FPS. And this is great because in terms of visual artifacts, since you're generating way less frames, so since you're generating only one fake frame for every two real frames, it should, in theory, deliver better image quality. At least in theory, of course. And in theory, I should be able to do some push-ups clapping my hands. And just because of that, now you have to watch to the sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And now that you know a bit more about lossless scaling and frame generation, let's explore another option, multi-GPU mode. And this is one of those options that people are constantly asking me to test, and I firstly tested with integrated graphics. As I believe most people have integrated graphics inside their CPU that they could use to run the algorithm only. So I went and activated the integrated graphics inside my Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and then went to lossless scaling and selected the preferred GPU for the algorithm as the integrated graphics and then I just tried it. It happens though that the iGPU seemed to not be fast enough to run well at 4K, delivering only 60 final FPS while I was having 54 with the 7800 XT. And even though things didn't seem right to begin with, I tried 1440p as well. And I mean, it went a little better, I guess, delivering now a bit more FPS than the ones that we're having with the 7800 XT only. But again, something just wasn't right. At this point, I thought to myself, well, maybe the iGPU is just not powerful enough to run the algorithm, and some people do have their older GPUs laying around. So I grabbed my RX 6500 XT that I had here on this shelf, put it on my computer, and tried it again. As I told you, we're gonna try the, the 5600 XT. If you watch it on the screen, you have the 7800 XT as the primary GPU, and then the 6500 XT. We're using a max frame latency of three. We're using the Capture API as the XGI and the QE target to two. Again, fixed two times, just trying to see how it works. It's basically the same. And now, uh, we're going to do the preferred GPU. As you can see, this is where you, you select the GPU that you want to do in terms of output and 
um, in terms of using it for the algorithm. And we have here the 7800 XT and the 6500 XT. So let's start with the 6500 XT. We're running 4K, so 54 FPS, 50 something. As soon, let me just check if we're running borderless full screen again borderless full screen since we're using the xgi we need borderless full screen Control alt plus s bam and we're now running lossless scaling and we did lose a bit of fps um so yeah we went from let's say let's try again so from 57 from 57 to 47 and remember we're using the 69 the 6500 xt and the 6500 xt is only consuming like 30 watts and it's at 78 percent usage and still we we are having only 46 fps base which don't really or doesn't really make much sense so we should have still 57 fps base and then going to the double since we're using the uh the 6500 xt to run the algorithm and the 7800 xt to run the gpu now if we go to lossless scaling and i change to the 7800 xt doing both things we drop from 57 to 50. we are now going from 50 to 102 and it's working smoothly very very smooth actually uh while with and of course, we're not using any power from the 6500 XT, only one watt. With the 7800 XT only, we have a way smoother experience, and at the same time, we have more FPS. And by the time I was making these tests, I thought to myself, once again, maybe I'm not making this work the way it was supposed to. And this is one of those times where I'm glad to be both right and wrong. It happens that in order for the lossless scaling multi-GPU to work the way it is supposed to, we need to set the GPU that will run lossless scaling as the output one. Meaning that in this scenario, I need to connect the monitor to the RX 6500 XT and then go to the Windows graphics settings and select the RX 7800 XT as the main performance GPU for gaming. Using the 7800 XT for gaming only and the 6500 XT to output the image and run lossless scaling only. And now, now it works. We go to lossless scaling again. I believe that you can see here that the preferred GPU is still 6500 XT. So now in this specific scenario, if you look at the 6500 XT, we're already having 37% usage. And that happens because we're uh, outputting 4K at 100 and something Hertz. So of course it is, it is kind of a toll on the 6500 XT. Now we go Control alt plus S to enable lossless scaling and we're having around 70 to 73. Control alt plus S, bam, and now our FPS didn't change. So for example here, 75 that we have or 76 that we have on the 7800 XT and now the 6500 XT is actually going from 60, 76, sorry, to 151, so going at two times perfectly, and the gameplay is very, very smooth. So we didn't lose any FPS at all because we're using the 7800 XT to game and the 6500 XT to just do the algorithm. We need more 50 or 60 watts because if you see the 6500 XT is consuming around 50 something watts, 57, 58. Um, so yeah, that's that's the price you pay. You have more power consumption. And if you put another card like the, the RX 570 or the RX 580, the power consumption will be even higher because it consumes more than this card. So take that in consideration. But apart from the power consumption, yes, it is working very, very smoothly. So I cannot really complain. By the way, if you're running the algorithm and at 4K, the algorithm is way, way more expensive than at 1440p. So make sure that the GPU usage that you see here stays below 100. Uh, because if it goes up to 100, so let's disable lossless scaling. Now, as soon as I go here and I raise the flow, so the flow scale and the flow scale is is what really controls the movement. So um, the movement pixel since the um, lossless scaling is an out of the game frame generation technique, it needs to have a flow scale in order to kind of predict the movement in order to have more stability. Raising the flow scale will also improve the quality, but at 4K it is much, much heavier to run. It will improve and it will basically reduce the movement artifacts 
but again, it is way heavier. Now, remember what I told you to be below the 99%, Control Alt plus S, bam, we're now using the flow scale. And as you can see, uh, we are now at 99% and the usage, the usage is much higher. So from 50, 50, 50 something watts to 70 watts, so basically maximum. And if you look at the FPS, while we're having 72, 70 something with a 7800 XT, if you look at the lossless scaling FPS, they are a bit below, meaning that the 6500 XT isn't able to catch up with the performance that it needs, meaning that the algorithm at 4K is way heavier for this card. And as soon as we start playing, yeah, I can see FPS drops and the gameplay isn't smooth at all. And that's one of the downsides. And if you look at the frame timeline, yeah, it is also worse because again, uh, the 6500 XT is basically running out of power to run the algorithm. As soon as we go back, we go and we reduce the flow scale to let's say 65%, which according to the um, to lossless scaling creator, is more than enough at 4K, even 50% is enough. Control Alt plus S, as you can see, the usage and the power draw are much lower now and basically smooth. Now we have a very smooth gameplay because again, uh, the, the GPU using lossless scaling is not at 99%. And, and yeah, we still have a bit, a bit of latency, but generally it just works great. Now we're gonna play decently, bam. Hoop, hoop, no guard. Yeah, the latency, the latency is a bit, is a bit there. So, yeah, the I can still. Yeah, finally, I made the perfect guard with his latency. There is latency, but much better than using a single GPU generally. Yeah, works fine. So as you saw, we we do make we we do need to make some we. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we do need to make sure that we do those steps in order to make it work But if we do those steps, it does work and it works fine very fine actually All we did was again introduce the 6500 XT in our second motherboard slot So we have the 7800 XT on the first one the 6500 XT on the second one Then connect the monitor to the 6500 XT which is the GPU that will use the lossless scaling algorithm So the output GPU and then go to the Windows settings and make sure that the 7800 XT is selected as the GPU for gaming meaning that the games will use the 7800 XT but the output the display output and lossless scaling will use the 6500 XT and that's basically how it works and again if you want to use the iGPU with lossless scaling just go and connect your monitor to the motherboard meaning that the image will go out of the motherboard but then you go to Windows and select your main GPU your discrete graphics card as the, um, the gaming card so again by connecting your monitor to the motherboard you'll be using your GPU to output the image and run the lossless scaling algorithm while the, the, the main GPU the discrete graphics card will be used for gaming only and this way you won't lose FPS because your main card is just for gaming and the algorithm is running on an entirely different card. So instead of going, let's say, from 72 to, to 60 FPS and then doubling it, you can go just from 72 to double the FPS, 144, which is, again, great. If you have integrated graphics capable enough of running the algorithm or if you have an old GPU just laying around. This is actually one of those things that was interesting to test. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share this video. Again, thank you very much for watching. That really means a lot to the channel. Leave your comment in the comment section if you have any doubts about the flow scale. I have way more videos on lossless scaling. And again, I took some days to make this video because uh, I took some days off to play that game that I was that I was running, Kazan, the first Berserker, or the first Berserker, Kazan. Um, very good game, by the way. And, and yeah, I was just taking some days off and I was preparing this video, testing several scenarios in order to make it work, uh, to see how it works, how it doesn't. I also finished testing the RX 9070, the non-XT. So the non-XT tutorial, the, the OC tutorial will also come soon. Then we'll have more comparisons and so on, so on, so on. Yeah, but, but generally that's it. Thank you very much. If you have any doubts, leave your comment in the comment section and I'll answer as fast as I can. And of course, you can wait for more videos on the 9070 and the 9070 XT because they'll come soon. Again, see you in the next video.
yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> he, he gets really stiff when I <laughs> when I put it on my. <laughs> Stop it. But yeah, see you in the next video, guys.